Excited? Yes, nervous? Yes, Not nervous. How many of you have um, uh, no experience? You come straight from the college. Oh, that's a lot. So you have a lot to learn. And how many of you have more than three years experience? Okay, so just one or two. Okay. So it's uh, largely going to be a batch of uh, freshers. And, uh, that's good because then we have these uh, raw minds that we can mold the body to our own uh, uh, desires. But um, welcome to Jaipuria. Uh, congratulations on making it to one of the better, if not uh, one of the best, uh, private sector, private school, uh, uh, business schools. And uh, you're going to spend about two years here. There's lots that you're going to learn. Um, I think uh, maybe Providence has dictated. I thought. Uh, uh, you were going to go first and I was going to go second, but Providence have dictated because I, I'm going to give you some little bit of knowledge and uh, Sir is going to give you a little bit of skill and Rizvi Sir is going to give you so knowledge, skill and knowledge, skill and I can't hear louder attitude okay. these are the three things, the KSA model there's actually a whole theory behind it. There's a KSA model which is knowledge, skills and attitude. It's, it's not enough just to have knowledge. It's not enough just to have uh, skills. It's uh, very, very important to have the attitude. And uh, that's what a two years uh, business school uh, learning does to you. Is that while the professors may give you the uh, knowledge and the industry uh, experts may give you the skills, but it's the systems that are in place over here and in other business schools which give you the attitude. And uh, small things like working in a group, uh, coming to the class on time, making sure your presentations are uh, well rehearsed and well presented. Um, that's really what you'll develop. And by the time you finish the two years over here, you're going to have uh, be a very, very polished uh, industry professional who will hit the ground running. Now, what I want to do today for the next uh, 10 minutes or so, uh, I have about uh, 10 slides and I'll quickly rush you through them. Um, my views on some of the burning management issues that are there today, that this is something that you have to be prepared for because you will join, you will hit the ground running, you will join industries and what are some of the issues that you have to look at. Um, the first uh, issue that uh, should trouble you is that uh, how long do organizations live? So you join TCS and uh, you think that TCS is going to last for 700 years or do you think that TCS is going to last for maybe 20 years? I'm just saying TCS just because our friend is here from TCS. But do organizations have a finite life or uh, do organizations uh, carry on forever and forever and forever? So what do you think? Um, what, what's the average of an organization? How long does it live? 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 75 years, more than 100 years? Bit louder? Yes. Less than 10 years. Very, very good. Um, Organizations actually have a very finite life. And uh, it may be ten, less than 10 years in terms of certain high technology, uh, software, fashion boutique, uh, etc. industries. And maybe, maybe about 20 years in some uh, other industries. And maybe some, something longer. It all depends on the concept that you learn uh, in your marketing class called the product life cycle. So there's something called a product life cycle and there's something called the organization life cycle. Organizations do not last for uh, very long. This empirical work done by a gentleman called Ari Hughes, uh, also published in the Harvard Business Review. But he looks at about 700 companies over 200 years, and he says the average expectancy of life is about 20 years, uh, which in terms of human evolution, puts you back into the Neanderthal age, about uh, 5,000 BC uh, before Christ. Most companies do not die, they transform and uh, either they close down and their assets are sold off or some companies are acquired by others. Um, what, are, what are the factors which actually uh, determine how long a company will survive? And uh, this gentleman, Ari De uh, has located four longevity uh, personality factors. What influences a company, what makes a company survive for very long? The first thing that he finds is uh, companies which last long, companies which live long, are companies which actually are very conservative in financing. And uh, conservative in financing does not mean being a kind of, does not mean being uh, conduced, that does not mean being parsimonious, 
What it means is that you are very, very cautious about the money that you are spending and there is always an ROI. You, know, you, you, you paid your fees here, uh, you expect a certain ROI which uh, can be from 360 days to 720 days. So being conscious about the return on investment that you are getting. The second thing that he says that companies that live for very long are companies who are, have the ability to adapt and to manage change. Um, this ability to adapt and to manage change is going to get very, very critical for you guys. Okay? Because I come from a time where the product life cycles were very long. I spent, I had the luxury of spending most of my career in the Steel Authority of India. Uh, in the Steel Authority of India, nothing changes. We've got very long PLC. But you guys will join industries where PLCs are changing very rapidly. And uh, you've got to be very, very careful, not only of the return on investment, but also on what is going to happen with this. Third point, he says that uh, companies who are survivors are companies which are aware of their identity. You know, uh, I can share it with Mr. Krishnan that uh, you know, whenever I meet a L&T guy or a Tata guy, the first thing that I, I, that I notice is a huge chip on their shoulder. They're very proud of the fact that they belong to the Tatas. And they're very proud of the fact that they belong to, um, uh, you know, Lassen and Dobro. Um, this pride, this pride when properly inculcated within the organization will actually, uh, you, know, you know, make you and transform you as an individual who's going, going, willing to lay his life down for this company. Take the case of uh, the Taj Hotel in Bombay. There's a Harvard case written on it also. You have these young uh, hostesses and cooks and stewards, etc., uh, etc., et who actually put their life at stake to help the guests uh, go out of the Taj Hotel when the terrorists uh, attacked um, a decade ago. Now, what is it in an organization which actually encourages you to do this? That you put in your organization above yourself. You know, you can run out of a situation, you can run out of the hotel, and nobody will blame you because self instinct is a very, very strong, uh, self preservation is a very, very strong instinct. But yet these guys, or even if you look at the recent film on this girl called Neerja, now nobody would have said anything if she had simply walked out and said, look, I've got to look after my own life. But yet she stayed back, helped the passengers, and also lost her life in the process. So the awareness of identity is something which helps the organization survive much longer. The fourth point he says is that uh, exhibit concern for society live within society parameters. At the end of the day, society is always going to judge you. And um, I didn't want to mention this, but there's a company called the Tatas, which is well respected, uh, uh, maybe not financially very efficient, could have made more profits, but everybody forgives them for being financially marginally inefficient. There's another company that I shall not name, which is very, very financially efficient, it makes a lot of profits for its uh, this thing. But the point is that which company are you going to be biased towards? The Tatas or this company X. Um, what will help you uh, change your, or what will help you prepare uh, for life in the industry two years from now? And I've tried to put this down as the seven new labors of Hercules. You know Hercules? Have you heard of Hercules? Yes, sir. yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Hercules was this guy from Greek mythology who had these uh, 12 labors and he had to clean up the Aegean stalls, etc. Et and each labor was very, very different. So, uh, in the management world, I've uh, put down about seven of these. Uh, um, we'll talk briefly about uh, let's see. a challenge of the product. Okay? Does your product remain the same or does the product change? Challenge of the customer. Customers are also changing. Challenge of the technology, challenge of the costs and quality, challenge of the profits, and challenge of implementation. Lastly, nothing else but challenge of the image that you get. Um, challenge of the product. I'm not, I'm not going to go through slides, I think uh, we'll uh, waste a lot of time. But uh, tell me, when you buy a Moom Pali in on the 14th of January in Delhi, what are you buying? You know what Moom Pali is? Monkey nuts? What are you buying when you buy it on the 14th of uh, January? Which happens to be loading. So what are you buying? You're buying tradition. Okay, because traditionally, if it's your first lodi or if it's your child's first lodi, you just got married and uh, this is the lodi that's been celebrated. It's uh, auspicious to uh, stand around the fire outside the house and throw mm, uh, monkey nuts into the east. But you don't have to wait for 14th of January. You can go down to Bombay 
and uh, you can take a train, a local train from Andheri to Churchgate and uh, you'll find that uh, these small kids are running up and down with small uh, you know, paper packets. Uh, what's inside those paper packets? Mumbai. What, what, what is it called? What is it called? It's called time pass. It's actually called time pass. Okay, so time pass, time pass, time pass, time pass. Uh, chemical composition is the same, the product is the same, but yet the challenges involved in marketing or selling these things are different. Okay, so that's that's one. Of, you know, uh, if you if you join, for example, let me take another example from uh, uh, the Tata Group. If you join a company called Tanish, which is into selling gold jewelry, and you get transferred from Calcutta to uh, Delhi, you think your job will be the same as a, say, as a, the marketing head, or your job is going to change? It's going to change. Why? Because the dynamics of customer expectation and customer satisfaction in Calcutta are very, very different from the dynamics of customer expectation and uh, satisfaction in uh, Delhi. Challenge of the customer. One of the things that you will learn, and again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, one of the things that you learn is that there, are, there is a difference between a customer, a consumer, a buyer. Okay, What's the difference between a customer and a consumer? Yes. Those persons who purchase the product. Ah, And consumer, those persons who actually consume, consume that product. Mm. That Slightly close. Okay. A consumer is somebody who consumes the product. A customer is one who decides. And a buyer is one who does the physical transaction. So, um, if my wife tells me that Ajit, when you're coming back from office, uh, please stop at uh, uh, Star Bazaar and pick up uh, a tin of lactogen, which is uh, baby food uh, for my child. Um, who's the consumer, who's the customer, and who's the buyer? Well, my wife is the customer definitely because she decides whether it's lactogen or whether it's satellite or whatever. The consumer is of course the brat uh, who doesn't have anything else to do except to drink milk. And uh, I'm the poor buyer who has absolutely nothing to do in terms of decision making. So, who is the most important person for you here? Who is the most important person for you here? Obviously the mother who makes the decision because she's the one who can make or break you. So, challenge of identifying who the customer is, is very, very important. Um, again, uh, go back to uh, the Tanish example, if you see some of the advertising. It's uh, the way the salesman will talk to your wife in trying to sell her a necklace is very different from the way he'll talk to you. Okay? What does he tell your wife? Madam, ye diamond necklace aap hi ke liye bana tha. All the other women will be jealous to you, etc. Et when you're paying up the bill, and that last thing has to be done to convince you to pay the bill, what does he tell you? Does he tell you, sir, aapki bibi baut sundar le gi is No. He says, sir, jaldi le lije, price is bandne wala hai. Very good investment. See, customer and consumer. It's very important for you to figure out who is the right customer, who is the right consumer, because you just may end up talking to the small, uh, half, one and a half year old brat who, who can't understand what you're saying. There's no point trying to sell him back to sell. Challenge of technology. As I said, technology is changing. It's changing very rapidly. You've got to be abreast of this particular technology. Whether it's, you know, you know, small, small things like uh, uh, WhatsApp or even the mobile phones, at a broader level, the mobile phones. Uh, what, what do you think it's done to the camera industry? You think the camera industry, Nikon and uh, Ricoh and Roliflex and other things, you think they're happy with what's been happening with the, with the mobile phone industry? No, they're not. They've declared this particular industry relevant. Of course, the, mobile, the camera industry has done something extraordinary. Is now they've, they've repositioned themselves into a different market segment altogether. Challenge of cost and quality. Cost comparisons place industry at a disadvantage. We have a problem with the domestic price parity in steel prices, since I come from the steel industry, let me share with you. In Japan, Germany and the USA, it's five to six days of per capita income. In India, it's one and a half years. Now, to a certain extent, this is an advantage, to a certain extent, this is a disadvantage. And you've got, you've got to figure out what is the cost quality ratio that you want to push in the market. 
Um, challenge of profits. How much, this, this is a problem that you'll come up in your second year when you get into this philosophical mode so far as management is concerned. How much profit is a fair profit? How much profit should you make? Should you make 10% profit, 20% profit, or 30% profit, etc., uh, etc.? Et that's, that's something that you have to work out yourself because there's no textbook uh, uh, answer to this. Um, challenge of implementation. One of the places where Indian industry really screws up is that we are not good at implementing. We are very good at formulating strategy. Ask me. I worked in the planning commission for six years. Our five-year plans are wonderful technical documents written with finesse. But if you ask me, out of those uh, 13 five-year plans, how many have been implemented uh, effectively? No. A couple of them have been scrapped even before they started. Implementation is the biggest problem that Indian industry has today. Challenge of the image. You know, a lot of time, you, you'll get a first entry into the CMD's office basically based on the fact that you're from Jeopardy and Institute of Management. Your image precedes your actual listing. And that, that's, that, that's a big thing. You've got to learn how to take advantage of that particular thing. Sorry, Mr. Sahib, I'm taking more time. Okay, last slide. What's my closing advice to you? First, you've got two years' time. Read horizontally. Read everything. Read Playboy, read... Uh, Femina, read Stardust. Uh, why, should you, why should you read Femina? The guys, not the girls. The guys? Why should you read Femina or Stardust? The girls, why should you read Femina? Apart from the obvious reason. Okay. Femina and Stardust have the highest advertising among all magazines. One issue of Femina, or one issue of Stardust will contain all the ads that you ever want to see. And especially if you're uh, specializing in marketing, um, that, that, that becomes important. Um, maintain a diary. You know, in, in, in the two years that you're going to be here, uh, you're going to learn a lot of things. And believe me, you're going to forget a lot of things also. You know, I did my uh, PGDM way back in the 1990s, and I, I forgot most of the stuff I had. So maintain a small diary of the critical things that you think are going to help you in the future. And don't lose that diary. Okay. So document everything that you've done. Talk to people. This is the best way to learn things. Talk to everyone. Talk to the rickshaw puller, talk to the Periwala, uh, talk to the, the, same, uh, the guy who comes to uh, pick up Kabadi from your house, uh, talk to the neighbors, etc., etc. And they give you perspectives which you haven't even thought of. So talking to people, reading horizontally, um, maintaining a diary is uh, something which is absolutely essential. And at the end of the day, I think you want to follow your dream. Do not compromise. If, you want, if your dream is that you want to become the president of IIBM, please follow that particular dream. Don't shortchange yourself. In Give yourself a chance. Thank you so much. I'm leaving the presentation here on the laptop, so if you want to take a copy, do take a copy. Thank you so much, sir.